Joining me now is Michael Beckley. He's an associate professor at the Department of Political Science at Tufts University. Michael, let's start there. I mean, this is such a strange week. Uh, I've been there before, and, and New York is basically paralyzed. You've got all these motorcades going everywhere, uh, roads closed, dignitaries racing one way and another. Um, I spoke to an ambassador from Latin America earlier today, and he said, uh, think about the history of the U.N., and this is the first time something like this has happened, a microscopic virus basically bringing the world to its knees. Let's start there with the, the eerie quality of this anniversary. Absolutely. This is totally unprecedented. I actually am in New York right now, and normally around this time of year, it's hard for me to get out of my apartment because there's so many uh, uh, motorcades going by and so many dignitaries being shown in. I think in some ways, this it almost is a reflection or a symbol of the challenges and the lack of international cooperation, the fact that is remotely from faraway locations and can't get together to do the sort of um, uh, behind the scenes negotiating that often leads to the biggest breakthroughs. So this is just one problem on top of many broader structural problems that are impeding true multilateralism. And you heard the uh, pitch for multilateralism and, and uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping, the Secretary General, both making those pitches. But at the same time, the U.S. criticizing the U.N. today and the U.S., of course, has ditched the World Health Organization, the Human Rights uh, Council, the U.N., walked away from international agreements. So Talk to us about that backdrop, how one uh, group of countries going in one direction and the U.S. Uh, kind of carving out uh, another direction altogether. Well, I actually think the United States is, is a reflection of, of a broader trend going on where you have a rise of nationalism um, really across, across the world, countries putting their nation first, their interests first, and making multilateral cooperation much more difficult. You mentioned that Xi Jinping is calling for multilateralism, but from an American perspective, China has not been the best multilateral actor, whether it's its behavior um, and the national security law in Hong Kong or the situation in Xinjiang or the, uh, its um, military activity in the South China Sea. So I think multilateralism and who is committed to it, it's often in the eye of the beholder. And so defenders of America would say, well, you know, they would point the finger right back at China. And unfortunately, that's where we are, where you have the two strongest powers in the world that are basically facing off. And really, uh, entire parts of the UN are basically becoming fora for U.S.-China competition. Even something as seemingly as mundane as food and agriculture is now a site of geopolitical competition. Well, let's talk about food, agriculture. Um, you know, one of the things that, was, uh, that also has taken a hit because of this virus, the sustainable development goals, uh, they've suffered uh, as a result of the pandemic. You know, how does the national world body, rather, recalibrate moving forward? Because these are issues like poverty, climate change, um, and they've been on the back burner. Yeah, I, I think that's actually where the UN needs to start. I think it's going to be very difficult for the UN to regulate broader security issues, just given the great power standoff. But so things like food, uh, you know, regulation of civil aviation, um, and one would hope disease pandemics could be a site where the interests of all countries involved are just so manifest that you think they'd be able to put their great power politics behind them. Um, I, unfortunately, I actually think that the COVID crisis throws a lot of that into doubt because we had an organization, the World Health Organization, that was dedicated to coordinating responses to something like this. And instead, we've had kind of every country going their own way, countries hoarding supplies, uh, and the World Health Organization was late in terms of saying, hey, there's human-to-human -human transmission, and this is something we need to take seriously. So I, I personally am skeptical that there's going to be much progress made on something like uh, economic development challenges when we couldn't even coordinate um, a pandemic response in the middle of such a crisis. Michael, we have about 30 seconds left. What are you going to be looking for this week? Uh, who do you expect to hear? What's, what is going to be of interest to you? I'm most interested to see how the United States represents itself, frankly, because I think we're at an inflection point. Given the election that's going on, it's pretty clear what the Trump administration is going to say, but it's also interesting to monitor what uh, the Biden team is going to say, because a lot of people expect this big, great return to multilateralism if they win the election. I personally am a little bit more skeptical. I think some of the U.S. animosity towards the U.N. goes much deeper than just the Trump administration. So it'll be really interesting to see not only who the Trump administration sends and their message, but also what the Biden team says um, for, for their part. All right. Michael Beckley joining us from New York. Thanks so much.